An ornithopter is a machine that flies by flapping its wings like a bird or a dragonfly, instead of by moving air over a fixed wing like an airplane. In the real world, making something that flies like a dragonfly and is also stable and safe and durable is really, really hard. But that exotic otherness that feels both futuristic and natural is probably exactly why Frank Herbert used them in his Dune series. What is up everyone? My name is Matt and this is my review of LEGO's Atreides Royal Ornithopter, designed after the version used in the 2021 Dune movie. This set includes 1,369 pieces and will cost you $165 if you buy it in the US. Speaking of pieces, there are two new ones that come in the set. Two of the cool smoky gray canopy pieces we see here, and eight of these very cool, very long, unique wing pieces. There are eight minifigures in the set, and I think they're the eight most important characters from the first movie. But before we take a look at those minifigures, let's look at this ornithopter because it's really an engineering marvel. When it's displayed on a table like this, looking like a tiger about to pounce, the retractable landing gear is down, the ramp in the back is lowered, and the wings are folded back. Just don't expect to be marching any minifigures up that ramp because this thing is like solid Technic inside, so that ramp is just for show. The first thing to know is that this tail area here is strong, like really strong, because this is how you're supposed to pick it up. Once it's off the ground, you can retract the landing gear and the ramp by turning this knob on the side counterclockwise. It rotates super smoothly and easily in both directions, and you can feel when everything is in its locked position. To expand the eight wing pieces, this large switch on the top side is pushed forward until it locks into place. The way all these wing pieces open up and unfold without interfering with each other is incredible. Mike Siaki was the primary designer for this set, and he also designed some of my absolute favorite LEGO sets, like the Lion Knight's Castle, the Lord of the Rings Rivendell set, the Orchid from the Botanical line. I think this was the first time he used a lot of Technic in a design, which seems crazy to me because the complex functionality he was able to include in this ornithopter is really stunning. Once the wings are out, the textured spine you see on the back here becomes a button that you press repeatedly to create that flapping motion of the wings, and that really brings the set to life. There is a little bit of a trick to this, where pressing closer to the front is better than pressing farther back. These wing pieces are a little bit heavy and have a lot of momentum, so if you pay attention to the timing, you can really use that momentum to get a nice flapping effect on the wings, even though the travel on this button is pretty small. I want to talk a little bit about the build process for this set, because by now you've probably heard that really this is just a Technic set in disguise. And it's true, there is a lot of Technic packed into here, and I'm someone who appreciates what Technic can do, but don't always enjoy building those sets. The creators of the instructions did something really clever and useful here though, by including regular breaks where they would explain what you're building and why it's important. And I'm not sure why that's so great, but I found that learning why a spring section was important to maintain tension really helped me like feel mentally engaged and interested during the build process, instead of just mindlessly stacking bricks together. This set also incorporates a good amount of regular system pieces and studs not on top construction to keep things feeling varied and interesting for me. I normally really like sets that you can build with a friend, but to me, I think these larger, more complicated sets of one vehicle are a little bit better for one person to build with a little bit of time on their hands. And you might be a slightly faster or slower builder than me, but this set took me about half of a Saturday to do, and I actually really enjoyed the whole process. Rotating the dial for the landing gear is a lot easier to do while the wings are extended, so after that landing gear is down, we can use the lever to pull the wings back and look at the cockpit. The top panel is fixed, but the two side panels can each rotate upward to give you access to the interior. There's a control panel and a split yoke for the controls and two seats that can be easily removed so you don't have to do finger gymnastics to get a pilot and a passenger in there. It would be great if we could fit more than two minifigs in here because the movie version fits like six to eight people. At this scale though, there's just not really a way you could easily do that without making the set a lot larger. The only other real criticism I have for this set is that all the visible blue and red Technic pieces are a little bit distracting for such a dark set intended for adults. And I understand that LEGO often uses other colors in their builds to help make the instructions and the build process easier to follow, but for $165, I think they could have included a set of those same parts in black for builders who want a more refined looking end result. Let's look at the minifigs starting with Paul Atreides. Paul is dressed in his dark green jacket and pants worn during much of the first half of the movie. I didn't actually even realize this outfit was green until I saw this minifig and then went back and watched the movie again. He comes with a great looking hairpiece and a second face and holds a short knife. Leto Atreides is Paul's father and he wears a still suit that looks amazing with really detailed printing on his chest, back, and legs. I'm greedy so I wish we got printing on his arms too, but we don't and these still suits still look really good. Still suits still. I don't know, it's a lot of stills. Leto holds a set of binoculars and comes with a nice looking hairpiece and two facial expressions. One that's sort of stern and focused and the other with a smile. 
Liat Kynes also wears a still suit, of course, but comes with a soft cape and dark tan that looks really great on her. Her hairpiece is accurate to what we see in the movie, and she comes with two faces, one that's determined and focused, and another that includes the mask for her still suit. Her eyes are this bright blue color because of all the spice dust that covers Arrakis, and she comes with two sand picks. Chani here is a Fremen warrior and the third still suit in this set, and also comes with a molded scarf and a dark tan similar to Liet Kynes' cape. Chani's head is like a coffee color and also comes with one expression showing her whole face and another with a still suit mask. She comes with a hairpiece that gives a little bit more suburban mom than her windswept hair from the movie, but whatever. Her eyes are that bright blue color that you would expect, and she also comes armed with a Chris knife made from the tooth of a sandworm. It looks pretty giant here to me, and I sort of wish they went with a smaller knife mold for this. Lady Jessica wears a gold dress with a hood, and it looks pretty nice here for the most part. The gold printing on the metallic gold chest and dress bottom look great here, and even the thin chains of her gold veil are represented on one of her faces. I'm not the biggest fan of these hood pieces because they don't blend very well into the rest of the outfit, in my opinion, but at least that means that the material is a perfect match for the rest of her outfit. Jessica's second face is a subtle frown with no veil, and she also comes with a brown hairpiece if you want to show her with her hood down. Gurney Halleck wears his military armor that includes large shoulder pauldrons and a large sword, and tidy gray hair with two facial expressions. Duncan Idaho just got up from a nap and wears his green House Atreides pants and loose-fitting white shirt with printing on his chest that actually does a pretty good job of matching the skin color of his head. He comes armed with two blades and his long hair is up in a knot that looks great, but it doesn't do the best job at hiding his second face. You sort of see part of his five o'clock shadow peeking out from the bottom there, and you know, that's not ideal. Lastly, we have Baron Harkonnen, the main antagonist from the first movie. He is very heavy and can't walk around anymore, but he can float by using these suspenser belts. He's shown floating high in the air here with his long tunic hanging below him, and there's nothing to see under that printed cloth because his body and legs are solid black. He looks a little bit ridiculous, but I think it's really cool that Lego decided to try to do something a little bit different with this character. He only comes with one face, of course, because he doesn't have a hairpiece. The Atreides Royal Ornithopter is an ambitious set. It combines the design and display ability you would expect from the Icons line, the engineering of a Technic set, and eight fantastic minifigures from what I think will be recognized as a classic movie. At $165, I know it's maybe a little bit on the expensive side and maybe isn't that obvious pickup that it would be if LEGO had priced it at $150 or less, but there is a very good chance this is the only Dune set we are ever going to get from LEGO. So if you're at all a fan of the books or movie and have a little extra money in your pocket, then I would strongly consider picking this set up before it retires at some point. Later, nerds!